God says, love thine enemy. When a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. When he pulls out your eye, say, it's all right, brother. You know, Christ. Now, here on earth, he creates this earth, and he doesn't like it at all. And he creates floods and rains of snakes and all that. The most unforgiving son of a bitch that ever lived. There's no such person. It's made up by man. Now, why did man make up the God story? That's the whole thing. Why? Who made it up? Once there was a fat son of a bitch, a mean one, that owned thousands of acres. And he owned it because his father took it away from somebody else. And he had thousands of people living on those acres. And he said to these people, I was put here to rule over you. My God. See? And this guy lived in a great big house. Castle. Lots of rooms. Thousands of them. And he said to the little people down in the valley, the greatest thing you can do is raise pigs and cows and bring me your finest wine and women. This guy had hundreds of wives. And he said God appointed him to rule over them. Now, he also found that a lot of his lamps were taken away. He had brass lamps and things outside of his building. And these little people used to steal things. So he appointed big, husky guys called guards. And they used to stand outside the place and keep the little people away. And one day, something interesting happened. A very little guy came up to see him. He said, I can keep these little people away from your castle, and you won't have to feed all those guys. He said, how do you do that? He said, watch. He took two clear glasses with what looked like water, and he mixed them together, and it turned black. I said, that was terrific. Now watch it. He took some fire and put it in his mouth. He said, I'm going down these little people, and I'm a magic man. I come from the one on high. And he did a couple of magic, put his hands in fire, put fire in his mouth, you know, all kinds of trickery. And the little people said, he must have power. Then he said, there's a guy up there, and if you steal, nobody's around. In the middle of the night, that guy, he can see. If you're down in a cave, he can see. So if you take something, you get a toothache, or anything, that's because you didn't behave right. And he scared the shit out of these people. And he built a building called a church. And in that building, it says, thou shalt not steal. And the only one that has anything worth stealing is this guy. And he conditioned all the little people not to take anything that doesn't belong to you. Where did this guy get the castle? Now these people used to kill each other and fight with each other all the time. So they went to church and the church said, don't fight with your wife. Once you get married, don't fight. Don't fuck around with Jennifer. You're married to Louise. Don't do anything wrong. See, because if, if you had a lot of little houses in the kingdom and this guy was screwing this guy's wife and this guy's wife was screwing that, they'd be fighting all the time. So they made the moral law, okay? But this guy, King Solomon, in the Bible, had 1,000 wives. There's nothing wrong with that. King Solomon, see? But the schmuckery down here gets one wife. But if you're rich, you had three wives. So, what this guy did that owned the castle is he had these guys singing his song. And all these little people went to church, and they thought it was terribly wrong to see you. But they got tired. They go to church, they said, Jesus Christ, it didn't rain for six months. I'm starving. The plants, the plants aren't growing. A lot of bad things are happening. And they said, if there's a God, why do these bad things happen? And uh, the priest said, uh, the priest said to these little people that you too will all live in a big castle and have a big house. And they said, when? So after you kick the bucket. When you die and they bury you, you go to heaven. There's no rent, no taxes, no jobs. You know, you sing, you play the harp, you walk through the country, everybody is an angel. Oh, how are you? I happen to see you. No deception. Here? No. There. After you kick the bucket. And all these little people worked real hard, and they gave a little bit of their income to the church. I mean, sure, they couldn't leave the village. And the village paid them exactly a living wage, so they couldn't pack up and leave. You give them a bag of rice a day and a glass of water, and they can't afford to leave. And then, when this king had trouble with another king, he said, God called upon me to tell you to go to war to kill those bastards because they're no good. They all got black hair. We have red hair. So you kill the black-haired people because they believe in another god, which is the phony god, the devil. Right? And all these assholes went to war. And they came back. He said, don't kill each other. He needed it. Okay? So, the moral law is not real. It's made by man. God doesn't hang a peckle on a guy, so he'd make it go up like that before he's married. After he gets married, the pecker doesn't go up, it goes up all the time. No Bible written. It says, starts true and after you get married, God wouldn't hang a peck on you before you got married. You understand what I mean? The gods that men make are so stupid, 
They are really insane. Let me show you how insane they are. There was another ignoramus that people admire called Moses. Long white beard, very ignorant man. He climbed a mountain one day, and the higher you climb on a mountain, the less air. And the less air, a tendency toward elation and high feeling occurs, sort of spiritual feelings. And he saw a burning bush, which we call St. Elmo's Fire today. It's an electrostatic joy. And he looked at this burning bush, and he says, I am he that is. <laughs> God said to Moses, you go down to this Pharaoh and you tell him to set your people free. And Moses thought that was a good idea. And the poor bastard climbed down the mountain and walked all the way over and he talked to the Pharaoh. And he said, let my people go. And the Pharaoh said, no. And you know what Moses did? He went back up to the mountain and he said to God, you know, God could hear him in the valley too. But he climbed up this mountain, he was so dumb. God, if you were in a submarine or in a cave a thousand miles, you don't have to climb up on a mountain. But this ignoramus climbed the mountain, and he said, he said, no. He said, well, God said, you go right back and you tell him that if he doesn't set your people free, it's going to rain blood and snakes and frogs. Most of you, that's terrific. And he went back and he said to the Pharaoh, you don't let my people, mm -mm. And he made it rain snakes and frogs and all that. Then he said to the Pharaoh, now you don't let him go? Mm -mm back up the mountain again. He said, he said, no. And God said, the firstborn will die for every Egyptian if he doesn't let the people go. And Moses thought that was a terrific idea and he went back and he told the Pharaoh said, no. The poor bastard went back up the mountain. It took Moses a long time. And he said to God, why, after all these rains of blood and all that shit, why didn't the Pharaoh set the people free. And you know what God said to him? Not according to me, according to the Bible. God said, the Pharaoh didn't set them free because I hardened his heart. First, the asshole says to Moses, go ahead and tell him if he doesn't do that. He was insane. So now, Jesus said, when a man strikes you, turn the other cheek. Love thine enemy. You know what that means? If a guy comes in and murders your mother, help him. Do the best you can. But when Jesus came into the temple and he saw the money changes, he didn't say, all right, you boys have to leave. We don't have any business transaction with him. He drew all his hit him with sticks, stick and he chased him out. What an asshole. What contradictions. And when people read their Bible, they don't see any of that. Isn't that amazing? They don't see any of that. Now, Satan was once an angel. His name was Lucifer. He was God's right-hand angel, according to the Bible, not me. Okay? And one day, Lucifer, I don't know whether he smoked or not, but he was sitting on, he was looking at God, sitting up there on the throne, and he says, you know, I'd like that, because in the Bible, it's to try to better yourself. Make something of yourself. Don't just stay at your particular position. So Lucifer said, Jesus would be a nice thing, you know, if I can get that seat up there. He's trying to better himself. And God said, what are you trying to do there, you son of a bitch? And he said, from now on, you're going to hell. He said, gee, what am I going to do there? God makes a noise. You will be known as the tempter. You're to walk over to a married guy and say, why don't you fuck around with Jim's wife? Have a ball. You know? That's what the tempter is. The tempter is a person who goes around saying, hey, your boss got a lot of money in the drawer and he leaves at night. Why don't you take it? Say, who made the tempter? God. Then he made man so dumb and so ignorant. See? This kind of God, in other words, if you have a child, I don't know this, but I think you try to make her or him smarter than you are if you had the ability to raise it, wouldn't you? Not dumb enough. God made man so dumb that he's made a graveyard of half the earth. He's destroyed things. Man invented the torture chambers, the rack, the gas chambers. And man thinks he's God's divine creation. And he thinks that God likes to be worshipped. So you sit down, you lie on the floor, and you say, you're terrific, God. You're magnificent. You're wonderful. And he puffs on the cigar and says, how about a little more? See, they make God that kind of person. Whereas Jesus, on the other hand, he went around washing the feet of his disciples. When he went around all day and did hard work, he didn't come in and said, all right, boys, I'm God's son. Shine my shoes, clean my feet, and scratch my back. He cleaned their feet. And there were four beds around. He'd lie on a stone and sleep. as the way you take it. <coughs> but all these phony Christians today with their palaces and gold temples and shiny books and the fancy hat of the Pope, silk and gold, all antichrist. Your whole fucking society is utterly corrupt. There's nothing to do with God. And the God that they wrote about was also a jerk, because it was made by man. 
was a dumb God. If Jesus came back, or if there were a God, and he looked at the earth and get the hell out of here. Terrible place. It's a terrible place because most things people believe in aren't true. If you make people uniform, you can control them. If you teach people to read and think and question things, you lose control. So the best idea is to separate people if you wish to maintain a monetary system. It's called divide and conquer. By dividing people, they're not a threat. You can control them. What we are trying is to see if we cannot radically bring about a transformation of the mind. Not accept things as they are, but to understand it, to go into it, to examine it. Give your heart and your mind with everything that you have to find out. The way of living differently. But that depends on you and not somebody else. Because in this there is no teacher, no pupil. There is no leader. There is no guru. There is no master, no savior. You yourself are the teacher and the pupil. You are the master, you are the guru, you are the leader. You are everything. And to understand is to transform what is.